Most women these days are lazy. They're not good at anything. It is paramount. I would not deal with any woman that can't cook and clean. I'm not going to hire somebody to cook and, cook and clean. Meanwhile, I'm making all this money so that you could sit on your ass all day. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. Thank you very much for the email. It's been a great pleasure to be in this program. And back in the course since last week, I have three questions related to relationships and strength that I'd like to ask you. Uh, the very first question is, despite knowing logically that my mission comes first and that most modern women are useless, <laughs> there is still a residual amount of neediness in me. How can I get rid of these last traces of weakness? Now, I don't know if you can get rid of it, but I think recognizing it for what it is is really important. Uh, as human beings, as men and women, we're better together. We want to be together because God made us that way. God made it so that a man craves his woman and a woman craves his, her man. We really do actually, when we're living in rightly ordered ways, create some beautiful stuff together, right? Like families, like civilizations, right? Men and women need each other. Men protect the boundaries and push them. Women create on the inside and build the culture, right? There's, there's a beautiful interplay between men and women. Since feminism and postmodernism, all that has gone through the window. And the genders are confused. And when you say women are useless, it's not that they're useless. It's just that they're not good women. So I guess that makes them useless, right? Because all the things that or superpowers to women have been denigrated in our culture. And women have been taught that in order to be of value, you need to be like a man. And to be like a woman means that you are oppressed. So what is good for women that makes them of good use, right, would be to make babies, to have families, to be in relationships, to be a wife, right? Like these, what, and these feminist women, they're never going to be happy because a woman finds herself in relationships. Women know themselves through relationships. Men know themselves through achievement. That sounds sexist, but it's the way it is. It's the way it's always been. Women are the relationship bonders. They're the glue that hold people together. They're more egalitarian. They're more communicative. They work in circles. It's a beautiful thing. It's a great thing. It's great for the women. It's great for the children. It's great for the tribe. But instead of being that nucleus for the, for the family and for the society, what women have done now, because feminism has taught them that no, you're not you're not defined by your relationships you're defined by your achievement and then you got men out there like what what are all these women doing out here shouldn't they and you got to remember man this is a brand new this is a brand new thing post world war 2 where all these women are in the damn workforce they weren't in the workforce the way they are right now and it's a big part of the problem why we have so much adultery and stuff because they really actually belong home with their children and so when you say women are useless i'm just saying they're not being put to the proper use so I guess that means useless anyway so you're talking about this neediness right uh that neediness I'm trying to like soften the load a little bit by letting you know that it's not necessarily a weakness it's more of a it's a it's a primal urge it is a divine it's a divine call right to procreate to want to be with a woman and a woman to be with a man right and you're asking me, how do I get rid of the last traces of this weakness? Now, I can't answer that question for you because I, my life is fed into that weakness. I'm married. I have children. I'm doing that thing. I'm with a woman. I've been with a woman for a very, very long time. But I do respect, honor, appreciate, and see the value in the monks and the saints and the early church fathers. And if you read some of the writings of the, of the desert fathers, you read the Philoclia, Philoclia, you read some of the early Christian writings, you'll see how these men lived their lives to overcome all temptation, all temptation. Anything that would obscure their pursuit for the father. They dedicated their entire lives. And this is why to this day in the Greek Orthodox church, Women aren't even allowed up on Mount Athos 
right? And you know, the feminist world, they'll say, oh, that's a, that's misogyny. No, it's practical. These men don't want a distraction, right? And even, you know, you say, how do I get rid of the weaknesses? Even those men are so weak that they have to stay away from women. If that's what you want, then you just stay away from them. You go to places where they are not. If you find that you're in the presence of a woman, go away. If you see a beautiful woman coming, you t drop your eyes, you turn away. The whole And like these guys on Mount Athos, these, these monks on Mount Athos, they don't subject themselves to the, uh, to the temptation so that the weakness is never, ex is, is never stimulated, right? Like, so for example, if you're addicted to Krispy Kreme donuts, you don't go to where they have Krispy Kreme donuts. You're not going to drive by the Krispy Kreme place and smell out your window. You're not going to go to the office party that every week you know they're going to have Krispy Kreme donuts. You don't buy it and leave it in your cabinet just in case. You don't hang out with people that say, hey, we just got some Krispy Kreme. You stay the fuck away from it, right? If you want, and I'm not knocking it at all, because like I said, I read these men's works and I understand it. There's two there's two respectable modes of being for a man. That is to be a father or a monk. Father means husband, means marriage or monk. Marriage or monk. Marriage or monk. Everything else is a part of the degenerate culture that we spoke about earlier. I gave you more long rant on. Sterile transient sex. Entertainment, sex entertainment is garbage. So how do you get rid of those weaknesses? You don't. You either indulge into the weakness and you pursue that path or you stay the hell away from anything that stimulates that temptation. That's really what it is. Don't punish yourself. Just get away from them. Stay away from them. Stay away from women. That's all it is, right? And you find yourself thinking about women, just, just do like the monks would do. And they would recognize that's a demon. That's a temptation from the devil trying to throw you off your righteous path until you're ready. Number two. For the future, what are the things I should be looking for to identify whether a woman is right for me and whether she will be capable of aiding me in my mission? I, th I think that's the wrong question. And I know you're coming from the right place. And the reason why I say that is because we have to do some groundwork first. When you say, what should I be looking for in order to identify the right woman? That's like me saying, hey, Paul, what should I look for in hiring an assistant for my business? And meanwhile, you don't know my business. You don't know what I need help for in my business. You don't know my finances in my business. You know nothing about the culture in my business, right? Even my mission, right? You say mission, but I'm not clear on that. So I can't give you that. What is important is for you to get very clear on, just like someone who's hiring for their business, what I need in a woman. What kind of personality will be required for this woman to help me in my mission, right? Your mission is like your business, of the business of your life, right? And so you gotta look at her resourcefulness, right? What is she good at? When most women these days are lazy, they're not good at anything. It is paramount. I would not deal with any woman that can't cook and clean. I'm not gonna hire somebody to cook and clean. Meanwhile, I'm making all this money so that you could sit on your ass all day. You had better be industrious. Not industrious in meaning that you're out there competing in the tax slave marketplace, but that you know how to raise a family. You know how to create a home, be a homemaker, right? I wouldn't, and this is just me, I'm just giving you mine. I would personally not mess with any woman that is not clean and can cook. If she's sloppy, if she's lazy and she can't cook, she's using a microwave, she gone. Because the, the mission in my life is to have a solid family. Big part of my mission is to be a father. And if I'm going to be a great father, I need a great mother for my children. So I don't mess with any woman. I wouldn't mess with any woman that wouldn't make a good mother. I don't give a shit if she has 10 degrees. I don't care how much money she makes. I don't even care if she's a supermodel or she's four foot 11. I'm first looking at a woman that's going to fit into my mission for what I want for my family. Not and here it is, man. A lot of people, they like this term uh, like 
we call husband and wife partners. That's not really the case. That's a newfangled way of looking at things. The man is the mission creator. The man is the mission driver. The woman is the helpmate. It's my mission. I want this kind of business. I want this kind of family. And I'm going to enroll you into this mission. It's not the other way around, but for a lot of people it is. And it's, and it's not as egalitarian as the feminized world will have you believe. You, on the other hand, have to be a good leader. This, I understand why so many women shirk at the idea of being submissive to a man. Because to be submissive to a weak man is self-destruction. And most men are not worth being submissive to. Most men are not strong enough to follow. This is why women are shit testing the shit out of you guys. Because they want to know, is this man really worth his weight? Is he worth what I think he is? Can he really live up to the hype in my mind? And they will push you and they will pride you to see, is he really just weak on the inside? If you expose yourself to be weak, if you identify yourself as a beta male, if you allow your woman to push you around, tell you what to do, if you are more interested in keeping the peace in your home rather than leading with dignified righteousness, then you are going to get all walked over and not respected by your woman. She will not submit to your word because she doesn't believe that you are who you say you are. I rant, you know, I, 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 I talk about women because we're men and, it, and it's easy sometimes to point the finger and say like, look, you know, what's going on out there? But all of that is a reflection of the men in this culture. Everything that we complain about with regard to women has only been like that because we made it that way. We allowed it to be that way. We are the ones that permitted it. We are the ones that permit it by our low standards for women. Women will only, any people will only rise to the standard that you give them. When you have low standards just because she has sweet watery guts, that you want to go digging up in? Who says that? That's uh, Steph. Steph is cold. Just because she got those sweet, watery guts that you want to go dig in doesn't mean that she's worth anything besides blowing your load. What good is she? I want an industrious woman. I married my wife because she's smarter than me in many different places. I only hire people that are smarter than me. I don't hire people that are dumber than me or people I got to take care of or people who are going to be a burden in my business. Why would I do that with my wife? But once again, filling that female role and she fills that female role. Why? Because I fulfill my male role. Every, you know, they like to say this, you know, there's this old saying and, the, you know, the, the feminists like to use it like it's misogynist. But if you look at it and really understand what it means, when they say put a woman in her place, Putting a woman in her place is not necessarily about smacking her, right? It's not like, bah, get in your place. Putting a woman in her place is something that naturally happens when a man stands in his own. When a man stands in his own dignity, his own responsibility, his own strength and his own authority, a woman will instantly yield to that. Have you ever seen or been in a situation where there's this woman and she is a hen pecker? She is a shit tester. She just does not want to submit to you or to somebody else, but then she gets into another relationship. She gets with another guy and then all of a sudden, all that changed. And you're like, what the heck? She wouldn't listen to me like that. She wasn't giving it to me like that. She wasn't doing it for me like that. Why is she doing it? Why? What did this guy do to put her in her place? That guy is standing in his place and you wasn't standing in yours. When a man stands in his place, when a man takes his place, when a man unapologetically stands up and acts like a man, women will just swoon into their place. You don't have to tell them to get into their place. You don't have to argue with them because you won't win to get into their place. They will just want to yield into their place. And here's the thing. If she don't, then she's not the one. I want... I want a submissive woman. 
I don't want an argumentative woman. I don't want a woman to have to fight with. I don't want a woman to have to compete with. I don't want a woman to have to argue with. I don't want a woman that I have to prove myself constantly over and over so that she would listen to me and trust me. I show myself trustworthy and I expect you to follow my lead. That's basically it. That's huge. It's huge to find a submissive woman. Can you find one? Probably not very easily. But you have a better time if you carry yourself as an authoritative man. If you carry yourself as an authoritative man, you will attract submissive women. But if you carry yourself like a simp, like a blue pill beta boy bitch, all you're going to get is women that want to rule you. Watch. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.